The following is an exclusive presentation of Ravens Productions. What's up, Ravens fans? Welcome into a fresh edition of Ravens Unscripted, and welcome back to the postseason. We're obviously coming to you from the Under Armour Performance Center and have a fun show to recap that Browns win, but also look ahead to a huge matchup against the L.A. Chargers. The panel, Ryan Mink, Cliff Brown of Ravens Media, Pete Gilbert back with us of WBAL. And fellas, let's start with four downs. First down, big picture here. Ryan, your thoughts after what was a really entertaining game, had some demons maybe exercised <laughs> late. Uh, give us what was top of line for you after this one. Well, I think it's just getting the job done finally. I mean, the past two years, the Ravens have been knocking on the door and just unable to kind of kick it in. It, it kind of reinforces just how close everything is in this league. I mean, you look at it, and, and it could have gone either way against the Browns. I mean, it just could have. This time, the Ravens made the play. They get into the playoffs. Past two years, they just didn't make that play, and they're out. I mean, heck, if the Ravens knock down that ball in KC, they have a first-round bye. I mean, that's how thin the margin is, but it's good to see the Ravens rise up in this occasion and, and for C.J. Mosley to be the guy who makes the play, especially after – he was so close to knocking down, tipping that fourth and 12 pass. He, was, he hit Antonio Brown on the goal line. For him to be the guy that makes the play, it's just awesome. Yeah. I think that I really felt like they were going to take over this game when Lamar is on the verge of going in for that touchdown. Yeah. I didn't think it was going to be an ending like we've seen so many other times. But once that play happened, it's like the whole game shifted. And then <laughs> I'm in the fourth quarter, you know, sweating, man. You know, it's a different – Avenue for me being working for the Ravens. You had to now. keep me under control or yeah, I was hyperventilating next to you. I was trying, but I was faking it, Ryan. I felt <laughs> <laughs> I felt as nervous as you did coming down the stretch. But uh yeah, again, as you said, to see them finally close the door in that situation on defense, I think was the perfect way for them to end that game. You know, I, I think it's remarkable to be in that position, the virtually the identical position once again, and to to have the opportunity to go ahead and get it done. I tweeted at the time. How y'all feeling? And the responses were, I mean, everyone was sick. Everyone was miserable. Nobody was thinking, this time they're going to do it. <laughs> and so to go ahead and flip that script, and now that they don't have to answer the questions, once again, you know, the, the defensive collapse at the end of the season, you know, what have you learned from that? How are you going to make sure that doesn't happen again? They did it. They are able to move on from that now. I think it unshackles. I think the, the monkey is, you know, been tossed miles away off the back, and I think it's very freeing for them. Yeah, and I, I'm sure we'll hit this over the course of the show in the next couple of weeks as long as this team keeps playing. The, the defense has is, is been fantastic. It's been, in my opinion, the real reason why this team is, is where it is. But Lamar, for good reason, garners a lot of the headlines. And the way this team has rallied around him, the type of football they're playing, this was a matchup, guys, where – often is now described as the next 10 years in this in this division with Baker and Lamar. How did you feel, and I'll, Cliff, I'll start with you, Lamar handled another moment, if you will? I think he was tremendous. I mean, a couple of those, touch, both of his touchdowns, I mean, what other quarterback scores on those plays? I mean, I got a kick out of him celebrating basically the 10-yard line on the first one. <laughs> no one was catching and him. Right, exactly. I mean, he's just a phenomenal talent, electric. He's a playmaker, something the Ravens have needed for a long time offensively. And then Baker Mayfield, I mean, I thought he was good coming into the game. I'd already seen him once. But some of those darts he threw yesterday, uh, he's very, very impressive. And the swagger he plays with is not fake. And much like Lamar, I think Baker Mayfield is a guy teammates love to play with. So yeah. they finally have their franchise quarterback. We're going to see a lot of that matchup moving forward. I'm actually going to disagree with what you said, Evan. I, I don't know that it is the defense that you can give the most credit to. Because, I mean, this defense has been the same all year, right? When did the Ravens flip the switch? When Lamar Jackson took over, right? I think he has totally transformed this entire team, not only on offense with the formula that they have now run heavy. And, and he is the reason for that. It's because opponents don't know how to play him. They're a step behind. That's why the Ravens' run game is succeeding. And that has also changed the defense. He's made the defense better. So yeah, I, but I walked away from the L.A. game thinking the defense is the reason they won. Uh, the, the, their most the difficult. The defense in that game, for sure. But, but that's, the, that's the most difficult opponent they've played over the course of this True. stretch. True. And so if, if you're at your best, 
when your defense is leading you and you're beating your best opponent, to me, over the course of time, that's what you're going to rely on in now what is a rematch against L.A. and then yeah. – for their hope, a, 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 but the defense I, I isn't as good with, without Lamar. Without of Lamar, course, yes. So I think that you have to go hand in hand. Right, right. He, and, and I will say the offense won the Browns game. It wasn't the defense that I mean the defense made the play at the very end mm-hmm. that we just talked about. But the offense won this. Lamar Jackson won this. He was balling in the first half. Like I saw a difference with him in that kind of game. It wasn't get up and get out when he ran. It was get up and I'm going to go score. Yeah. I, I mean, he flipped it the It looked switch. like Louisville. Well, let, let, let's shift to the third down here because to your all, your guys' point, the run game ha- has been, if not Lamar, then as big a reason as any of this team has done what they've done. Can, can it get better or, or is it, it was sort of the zenith, if you will, what we saw uh, against Cleveland. Team. Well, it would have been better if they didn't have a phantom flag on Max Williams and taken away a 33-yard <laughs> touchdown. And, and Lamar would have had more than 100 yards. Yeah, been- Ken Dixon had more than 100 yards. Gus had 76. I mean, the, yeah. I, 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 what I saw from Lamar, what I thought was different in the ground game, he looked like Louisville. Yeah, Lamar. Right. He did. That he absolutely was. Uh, he de- hit decisive. when he hit the Jets. Yeah. I mean, he exploded past guys into the end zone when he would look like he was going to be sacked and spun out and turned into a 24-yard gain. In the background, there's a great shot that we got one of our photographers uh, at TV11. You could see a guy flailing and flying by and just comically missing him. And just that special kind of play. And it was a bounce back from him as well. You know, you go to the touchdown that Baker threw. Uh, to Brashad Perriman early on. The next drive was right back at him and a touchdown run from Lamar. And so he rises to the occasion. He seems to get better with that each and every week. Ryan, fourth down here. I think you can speak to this on the organizational side because you've been here longer than anybody at this couch. And then Pete, maybe from the fan base side of things, what it just means to be back in the playoffs. Yeah. This was an organization and a fan base that was used to this on a year-to-year basis and I would say was spoiled by it. But just to be back in this tournament again means what? I mean, this, this team was tortured, and the fan base, I think, was tortured. The franchise was tortured. They, I think we all felt like the Ravens were good enough to be there the past couple of years, you know? And like I said, just knocking on the door. And to, to finally get over that hump and get back in it, it just it reassures you that everything you were doing was, was right, you know? Cause, because like I was saying, the Ravens were good enough, and they just weren't in the playoffs, and it makes you evaluate everything differently. It but makes they you did look change. Through. They did change. To your point, in the shift they made at the yeah. bye, they, they, they made a, a sweeping Conscious change. Decision. Yeah, and it, they've been rewarded for it. Yeah, definitely. But, but I mean, I think that it, it's so narrow thin that you evaluate when you don't get in the playoffs, everything seems like it was the worst, right? And, and the Ravens were, were right there. They were good enough. They just didn't make that playoff play at the end. To make that play, it finally says, all right, Everything that we've been doing is built towards this. We have been good enough. Now we're going to show the world. Off and running here with a postseason edition of Unscripted. Coming up next, it's retweet or delete. But before we head to break, enjoy a 360 view of that C.J. Mosley interception presented by Triple X. Fourth and ten. Baker Mayfield to throw. Under pressure. His pass is intercepted. The Hayes in the barn. And the Ravens are in the playoffs. Welcome back to the show. It's been a little while, but time for retweet or delete. We dive into social media, and the panel lets us know if they endorse the tweet with the uh, the birdie. Let's come on, get, <laughs> come get your on, props Pete. up. These are I'm high end props here. I'm proud of the props. So the birdies are retweet. That means they agree with it, and obviously the X being a delete, saying they disagree. First up, this is from Jason Unger. I've literally watched this dozens of times. It's the C.J. Mosley interception. So clutch. Best Baltimore sports moment since the Delman double. What do we think, guys? And Pete had to let me know what that was because I can't stand baseball. Really? Uh, <laughs> so we got an, uh, a retweet, a retweet, and a delete. Pete, you're, you're, you're not buying this. No, and as much as that was a phenomenal moment, again, I talk about what the crowd was like there and what it meant to them. When you talk Baltimore sports moment, yeah. I can't get past UMBC. Knocking uh, off Virginia. Does they, that's an interesting one. University yeah. of Maryland, Baltimore County. So I'm yeah. going to include Baltimore. No, I mean, look, that was an historical, unbelievable, special moment that's good. that we yeah. were able to share with a nation. Yes. This it was a very – But more you showed me the Delman double. Oh, it was awesome. Camden was, was rocking. Yeah. That was the loudest I've ever heard any stadium anywhere at any time. 
I'm changing mine to the X. That's a good. I, for, I forgot about the UMBC win. Right. That was a good one. I win, do I win anything for this? <laughs> yeah, you get to keep your props. Sweet. All right, next up, uh, Kevin Van Valkenburg, uh, former Baltimore Sun writer. It's still at ESPN, yep. I think. Okay. Uh, sign me up for watching 10 years of Baker versus Lamar in games that matter, please. Yeah. Yeah, I'm How with high? you, too. I'm going to go. I don't <laughs> usually take part, but that was fun, and that's good for the division. I mean, uh, Cliff, what can you say – about what this means to the future of the quarterback position, you think? A lot, because particularly when you consider that Big Ben is not done either. So you've got Lamar, Baker, Roethlisberger. I mean, those are three guys. And Jeff guys. Driscoll in Central. <laughs> well, yeah. How can I leave him out? Yeah. So, I mean, yes. Baker, I think, has obviously changed the whole culture in Cleveland after so many years not being able to get the quarterback situation right, passing on some great quarterbacks for other – they're now playing for other teams. They finally have their guy. And Lamar, I think the style that he plays with is so exciting and different. There's still all this debate about how long can he do this? Uh, does he have to make changes? It's going to be really interesting to see this all play out. I all thought right. it was really yeah. cool how Terrell Suggs after the game said, I don't usually really like rookie quarterbacks or think they're all that, but these two guys are for <laughs> real, and, and they are the future of the league, you said. Yeah, it's, a, it's an unbelievable rookie class overall. All right, last up, Peter Schrager of the NFL Network. Had a long one here. The Ravens' offensive style run plays from 35 different formations. Milk the clock every single offensive play. Run plays on third and long may never work over the course of a 16-game season, but it absolutely could in a 12-team, four-week, single elimination tournament. Watch out. You've got a delete, a delete, and a retweet. So, make you you disagree with the I disagree. Tweet? I disagree with the part. the 16 games. Yes, season part? I disagree that it can't work over 16 games. It, it just to me, I keep hearing this like, ah, this can't keep working. Teams are going to adjust. They're going to stop the run. And guess what? Lamar Jackson's six and one is the starter. Yeah, but it's seven games. I mean, that's the point. Yeah, it's got to be 16. 16 isn't that many more. It's like twice as many, a little over twice as many. He's saying it's going to work over 11 over four more playoff games than this. So, I mean, why can't it work over 16? I, I just – I think that people are so conditioned now to only think that pass, 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 that has got to be pass heavy. Why can't teams do it a different way? And, in fact, I think it's a great formula because now t defenses have adjusted to stop a pass heavy offense. They've gone smaller, faster. Now you flip the script on them on offense and start smashing it down their throat. They're all of a sudden not built to stop that. So – I think it can work over 16 weeks. You know, I think sustainability, the question was, well, Lamar is going to get hurt. That would have been you know, why everyone question. was saying. And I'm like, think about it. how do quarterbacks get hurt? They get hit in the knees, stand in the pocket from a hit they don't see. We watch Lamar run. He takes some hits. He bounces right back up. He's protecting himself better. I think it can sustain because I don't think he's going to get hurt running. Oh, Andrew boy. Luck oh, would have change. something different to say. RG3 That's would have change. something different to say. It only I mean, takes one, but Lamar is good at avoiding them. But still, the more you run, the more you set yourself up for the, that one hit. Social media always brings people together. See that? <laughs> uh, coming up, though, we're going to dive deep into this Chargers matchup with just an open discussion on what uh, lies ahead for this Ravens team on Sunday. Stay with us. Welcome back to this final segment of a playoff edition of Ravens Unscripted. No gimmicks or games this time, just an open discussion about the matchup on Sunday against the L.A. Chargers. And guys, obviously, the second time around against this team. And the first time around went pretty well for the Ravens. But, Ryan, is it a good thing or a bad thing that there's some familiarity here? I'd probably say it's a good thing. I mean, the Ravens are definitely going to take some pages out of that playbook, and they have confidence because they, they won so dominantly out in L.A. Now, L.A. has to come to MT Bank Stadium. That's going to make it harder for them. So I think that it's good. But with all that said, it's tough to beat a team twice in the same season, and especially after the Ravens used so many disguises the first time around to kind of confuse Philip Rivers. Are those disguises going to work again? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, certainly he's going to do his homework, and nobody studies more for Philip Rivers than to try and prepare for a game. But this will be really interesting to see the first team that gets a second crack at a Lamar Jackson offense. Yep, yep. And so, you know, how much, what kind of adjustments can they truly make? Or is it just that effective that it won't matter? But that will be really interesting to see how San Diego responds, what kind of adjustments they LA. make. You did it. <laughs> you did it. You did it. He loses the bet. That's Dad minus one point. I, I'll get out my wallet here. Um, but, yeah, I mean, what kind of reaction, what kind of adjustments will yep. Los Angeles, right. will Carson, California, make? Yeah, I, th I think it's a tough matchup. Um, think about it. The Ravens did not sweep the Browns. 
They did not sweep the Bengals. They did not sweep the Steelers. Now you're trying asking them to sweep the Chargers, who I think are better than all those teams. Now, I do like the Ravens' chances, but I agree with you, Pete, that like Lamar is a guy, until you see him up close, I don't think you get the full effect of just how fast he is and how tough that offense is to Greg stop. Williams said exactly that after the Browns. Exactly. Yeah, I, I equated a lot to, to, to right. facing a team like the Naval Academy, where they yep. run such a distinct style that – it, you can't simulate it in practice. And, yep. and the fact that they, they at least will have physical evidence and it wasn't that long ago uh, could be helpful to L.A. Uh, <laughs> if we had to prioritize concerns, guys, that, that the Chargers possess, whether it's Phillip Rivers, their wide receivers, a healthy Gordon, yeah. or their defense in the pass rush, how would you, how would here's, you start Here's it? my concern, and, and we saw this on the very first play of that L.A. game, right? Phillip Rivers tried to air one out. He went deep, and Brandon Carr made a spectacular leaping interception. I, then they stopped doing that, really, for the rest mm -hmm. of the game. They did not throw deep. I think that, that Phillip Rivers is going to take more shots like that a la Baker Mayfield. I mean, the Browns, really, the only yards the Browns hit were trying to attack the, the Ravens. They just said, we're not going to march on this Ravens defense. It's too good. They, we're just going to take some shots. And I think, I think that L.A. is going to come in here. There were the way. surprising breakdowns in the secondary for the Ravens against the Browns. You wouldn't expect for a group that had been playing so well and is maybe in terms of depth is the best the Ravens have ever had mm -hmm. to have you know guys running free the way they did not routinely, but enough times to really give you pause. And at this point in the season, how is how are those breakdowns happening? You know, week 17, they they really well, should think, be I, ironed I out. I think part of it is communication. I I honestly think that it's harder for the Ravens' defense to play de good defense at home than it is on the road. On the road, crowd's silent when the defense is on the field. When they're making all those checks and weddles out there communicating, they can hear each other. At home, they can't hear each other, and I think you have some breakdowns like that. Yeah, I think Rivers is my biggest concern. I mean, in the, in the playoffs, I don't want to see certain guys. Uh, Breeze, you know, Andrew Luck is another guy, but Aaron Rodgers. Rivers is in that category to me, and it's just hard for me to envision him not being able to make some plays against the Ravens' defense Sunday. That doesn't mean that the Ravens aren't going to be able to stop him, but he's a special player to me, and he looks at what Mayfield did. He looks at some of those mistakes. He looks at the game film of the first matchup. I'm thinking he's thinking, you know what, there's some plays to be made out there, and he's the type of guy who can make them. All right, guys, minute left in the show, and there used to be rules to this, but I'm throwing them out the window because Garrett <laughs> broke them last week. I think Pete's broken them before. Predictions, <laughs> who's winning this thing? What's oh, the score? Boy. Go oh. ahead, do whatever you want. What's the score? <laughs> oh, boy. Or... I think it, that this guy's going to have 18 tackles or whatever we used to do. No, no, <laughs> you know what? I'll stand on it. I, I think the Ravens win this game. I think they have a lot of momentum, and I think that they, uh, I think that they match up well against the Chargers. So the Chargers are a team. Rivers, I agree with your point, Cliff, that he's the kind of guy that, that can go out and kill you. I mean, but he's also an in-the-pocket quarterback, and I think that when the Ravens pass rush and get geared up, they have more of a stationary target. These corners can match up against their wide receivers. I think that plays into the Ravens' defense's hands. I think this offense is – I think Lamar Jackson's feeling it. John, I really do. He's, John Harbaugh he's feeling it. has not lost a wild-card round game as his uh, tenure as a head coach, yep. and that's why the Ravens are going to continue that. And they haven't lost at home with Lamar as a starting quarterback. I think that's going to continue. All right, three W's across the board. Well, if the Ravens do get a win, we'll be right back here on this couch breaking down that game and looking ahead. And there are tickets still available for this Chargers game, so make sure to head to BaltimoreRavens.com backslash tickets to get yours today. Guys, really enjoyed it. Enjoy the weekend. Enjoy the game, everybody, and maybe we'll see you right back here next week.